I think we can get started, everyone. This is, um, my name is Daniel Stein, and I'm one of the co-founders of Stewards of Change and uh, National Interoperability Collaborative. And um, we are holding, uh, I think, uh, the sixth call in a series that we started up uh, about two months ago to uh, uh, what we're calling the Let's Get Technical group. And we have had, uh, this grew out of the, uh, uh, out of the, of the conference we held in uh, San Diego a couple months ago. And the desire and interest was to get people together to talk more about some of the technical uh, components and aspects and questions uh, associated with interoperability and data sharing um, and uh, across different sectors, across different domains and sectors of uh, health and human services and public safety and education. And so um, we are continuing to evolve that. Uh, let me ask folks if you uh, are online, there's a little bit of background noise, so what, if you could just mute yourself if you've got if you hear background behind you, that would be great. Um, yeah, thanks. We do want to keep it interactive, so I don't want to mute everybody and have to unmute you, but, uh, uh, but thanks, for, thanks for doing that there. Um, as I said, um, this evolved, and it's still very much a work in progress. Um, so we are trying to evolve this and um, design it so that it is uh, as, um, as responsive to uh, the needs of the community as possible. And so we'll talk a little bit about that, uh, hopefully a little bit more about that today as we get into it. And so what I'd like to do is um, just kind of go through the, uh, the agenda for today, and then we'll dive into the conversation. And we've been starting these groups by uh, some, uh, some brief uh, introductory comments and uh, folks who have joined the call. Um, um, uh, we want we were inviting people to introduce themselves, especially if you're new to the call, just to give us a sense of who you are and where you come from. Uh, that helps sort of fill it out a little bit. And the group is um, there's not that many people that we can't do that here. So after we do that, by some of the new participants, um, and uh, we'll go through a little bit of background again because there have been a number of new people on the call. A little bit on the National Interoperability Collaborative, just to give folks a a little sense of uh, where this fits within the, this larger initiative, and then a, a few housekeeping updates, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, uh, and then we then we'll launch into the today's conversation topics, where um, we are um, stepping back just a little bit to have a, a slightly broader conversation about um, sort of the purpose of the group and the goals that we want to uh, we want to want to work towards. Uh, we got very much into some of the details over the first couple of calls, which was terrific. And then there was a sense of, okay, well, where are we going? Uh, let's have a little bit of that conversation. So we prepared a couple of ideas around what that, uh, what that could look like and are very much looking for feedback. We'll, I suspect, do that kind of conversation fairly regularly as we get uh, a better sense of where uh, the participants uh, and the members want to go and how we can best uh, design this to fulfill the needs and the of the field and kind of what we're doing and what we want to be doing. Um, and so we have some ideas around that and then we also have some illustrative uh, use cases that uh, we want to discuss as a way to get pretty specific around uh, the kinds of topics we want to talk about and how we can demonstrate that. Now throughout the whole call here, um, what we've been trying to do is keep it uh, as uh, interactive as possible. So um, that means um, if you have questions or comments you want to bring into it, we're not going to hold uh, 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 we're not going to hold everything to the end and ask questions, but uh, we'll ask you to sort of just sort of jump into the conversation or there's an option to raise a hand or to put a comment in the chat box. But do just sort of jump in at an appropriate moment so that we can hear from you both ideas, questions, comments, those kinds of things. And uh, one thing I will note is um, uh, that we are recording the, uh, the conversation today and as we have recorded the prior ones. So um, you can uh, feel free to binge watch these at, um, over the weekend if you've missed the first ones. And, um, and if there's colleagues that you find um, that are interested in this and you want to share some of the materials with them, by all means, uh, feel free to uh, share the link uh, to, the, to the website. So with that, what I'd like to do is just, uh, if everyone has, um, I think most people are on the computer, I'm not sure. Um, if we can just go down, if you see, uh, depending how you've got your screen laid out here, um, at the top, 
um, if you can just uh, introduce yourself, and then we'll just kind of walk down that list so uh, so that we, um, I don't know everybody's on the call, uh, they're all their names. So if you could start off with that, and I think, um, I, I know that the first person uh, um, could just introduce yourself and where you're from. So you have to unmute yourself and, and take a shot at it. So it's there. So P H N. Hi, great. Great. Oops, I think I got the wrong one. Go ahead. Hello, keep going. Hi, I'm Lisa Plattsback from Olmstead County, a nurse informaticist. Oh, hi, Lisa. Welcome back. It, it's kind of tough, Dan. We're each at the top of our own list. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow it worked last time. Uh, you're each at the top of your own list. Okay. Well, uh, Noam, say hello. <laughs> Hi, Noam Arts. I'm with HLN Consulting. I spend most of my time in public health. Okay, thanks. I'm going to try it a different way then here. So, uh, Mr. Chavez, I believe you're on the call with us again. Dan Chavez, San Diego Health Connect. Hi, Dan. Welcome. Um, Neil, you're joined with us. Yeah, good morning. Uh, this is Neil Rosenblatt with the California Department of Public Health. And what do you do for them there, Neil? I, I serve the 40, 40, 40 million uh, citizens of California. <laughs> uh, more seriously, I'm, uh, I'm the uh, chief of the informatics branch within the Center for Health Statistics and Informatics. <clears throat> Well, thanks for joining. I know that you have a busy schedule serving all 40 million of them today, so I um, appreciate you taking a little time out <laughs> to join the Absolutely. call. Absolutely. Thanks, Tim. Tim, I think you're next up on my list here. This is Tim Pletcher. I'm the uh, executive, executive Director for the Michigan Health Information Network and the uh, President of the Interoperability Institute. That's fantastic. Um, the uh, next person up is, a, is, an, is an area code 727. Identify yourself there. Okay, well, we'll move right along here. Uh, I think, Amber, you're next up on my, on my list here. Hello, everyone. My name is Amber Ivey. I work with an organization called Pew Charitable Trust. And I work specifically on a product or a program, excuse me, a project that's working on modernizing the civil legal system. And we're really interested in how the civil legal system or the judiciary interacts with the executive branch. A lot of the issues that end up in the civil legal system either um, had their start in the executive branch or vice versa. A lot of the things that the executive branch deals with started in the civil legal system. So super excited to talk to you all and hear more about your work. That's great. Welcome, Amber. Thanks. Uh, John Auden. I had to click a couple of times to get off mute. Sorry, uh, John okay. Auden, uh, co-founder of Collaborative Universal Health. Uh, we've been focusing our IT expertise on trying to reintegrate um, clinical and behavioral care, especially for uh, youth at risk and more recently on applications for electronic social determinants of health. Uh, that's great. And where are you located? Uh, Newport Beach, California. Oh, okay, great, welcome. Uh, uh, Lester? Hi, uh, Lester Bird, uh, also with uh, Amber's team at the Pew Charitable Trust, uh, working on the oh, welcome. civil legal project, project. Terrific, thanks. And Pradeep? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Pradeep Podila, uh, Public Health Informatics Fellow with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and currently deployed at Denver Health. And uh, the focus of my fellowship is on uh, record linkage, identity management, and I am also exploring common data models by comparing different data models, uh, OMOP, Picornet, and a local data warehouse uh, here in Denver. Thank you. Excited to be on this call. Thanks. Wonderful. Great. Glad Thank you joined you. us. Thank you. Um, and I'm looking through my list of people who I think are new to the call. I think Eric, I think, uh, I'm not sure if you've been on before. Welcome. Eric, are you with us, John? Yep, uh, Dan, I'm here. I, I introduced hey. myself uh, last 
stuff. Sorry. I oh, introduced okay. myself last, last week. But, yes, Eric from HS Link, the open source health and human services platform. Great. Thanks very much. Sorry about that. Um, I can't keep all Sorry. the names. Uh, anyone else new to the call today that uh, wants to introduce themselves? Great. Okay. Well, um, so thanks everybody for for who have joined the call today. Um, as you may know, we um, for those of you, hopefully everyone has joined the um, the Let's Get Technical group. Uh, we have a, our membership continues to grow. Uh, thanks in large part to our social media guru Sundays Ben Chagra, who's I think also on the call, uh, has been reaching out to folks and encouraging you to participate. So there's uh, bios. For those of you who put up bios, you can find out more who's on the call as well, uh, amongst uh, lots of other information on there. Um, so what I want to do is just spend a minute here. Well, actually, just let me mention a few things, uh, and then I'll go into a little bit of background. One is one of the things we wanted to do was to ask, actually ask people who are part of the community that we're developing here to um, actually participate occasionally on doing some note taking. And so, because um, um, we feel that way, we can get uh, different perspectives on, um, on people who are listening in on the call. So, Sean Yoshikawa uh, has graciously volunteered to take some notes for us today, uh, and we'll be posting those. Welcome, Sean, uh, to do that. And so, we'll be, uh, we'll be taking volunteers uh, as we go forward for folks who want to do that in the future next couple calls and then kind of spread the uh, participation a little bit. Uh, ideally, that will stimulate some additional conversation. Um, two other things I just mentioned, and we can dive into these a little bit later. There's two upcoming conferences that are quite significant. One is the Medicaid Enterprise Services Conference in two weeks in Chicago, and then there's also the Strategic Health Information Exchange Conference, same week, but in, in, in uh, the D.C. Baltimore area. And a number of us will be there um, at those events. We were talking about ways to uh, identify ourselves and potentially have a chance to actually meet up at those events. Uh, so as to put a face and a name together, maybe have, uh, have an opportunity to have some of that conversation. So um, later on in the call or even online, we can, uh, we can sort of identify yourselves and see if we can do that. Uh, we'll be at the MESC conference. The stewards folk, a couple of stewards folks will be there, and we have a, a small uh, gallery of our, our murals that will be pretty easy to find uh, close to the vendor section. Um, and some other folks will be there from the uh, from from this group who will be in the, the Sheet Conference. And I think uh, Dan Chavez and a couple of other folks um, who will be planning on being at those meetings, so we can find them uh, and or track them down and, and have a chance to talk with them and, and meet folks in person. <coughs> Thanks. Um, I also wanted to mention uh, uh, Dave Walsh, who will be. Um, uh, we'll be speaking in just in a little bit is also the, the co-lead on this group. He'll also be at the Medicaid conference uh, and doing some sessions there, and he'll be also helping lead the conversation, uh, the technical conversations as we get forward, as we move forward in the rest of this conversation. So you'll hear from, um, from Dave and, and some other folks, as well as uh, Brian Hanspicker, who you may have heard from previously. Okay, so let me just do a little background. I think most people have been involved, might have seen this, but for some of the new folks. So this work is being done under the National Interoperability Collaborative, which is a community of networks, and it's um, designed to increase collaboration within and across multiple domains uh, to improve really health, safety, well-being, and overall operations. Uh, one of the things that um, this is really um, based on is this work that we did uh, a couple of years ago for, uh, for HIMSS, which was to look across uh, the interoperability spectrum to look at um, various different domains that, and what they were doing relative to interoperability. And one of the things we discovered was as we talked about, as we talked to people across the, the different spectrums, you know, we identified, you know, really six broad categories which we organized. And there certainly are more than these six, but these are the ones we focused on. And as we've done this work, people have pointed out different areas that may, in fact, be their own domain, um, like workforce, for example, uh, housing, transportation, some of those. But what we've done so far is we've looked at human services, uh, human and social services, public health, um, education, uh, public safety, emergency medical services, and, and health slash health IT as really, as really six big buckets um, uh, that are all involved very actively with developing uh, data sharing and interoperability 
and all sorts of different um, tools and resources to um, to address the challenges of serving uh, uh, sort of whole people uh, and communities. And what we found in this work on the six domains was that, in fact, there was uh, uh, some commonalities, uh, certainly from a strategic perspective, around wanting to and needing to, to connect, uh, but then also a lot of divergence um, because everybody is sort of designing the world from their own vantage point and what they need, whether or not it's from a health or a public health or social services perspective. And that really kind of set up this larger question for which the NIC or the National Interoperability Collaborative was formed, which in many ways was to look at across these domains and to see if there was a way that we could actually um, facilitate uh, conversations across and between these different domains. Well, you, as you signed up for the NIC, you may have been asked for, you were, were probably asked for what your area of expertise and interests were, and that question was based on this, 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 uh, this, this work that we did. Um, ideally, as this evolves, uh, as the, 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 the hub evolves, which includes more than just the let's get technical, we are hoping in to really facilitate more conversations um, across these domains. Uh, we think that there's an intersection that is incredibly interesting and incredibly valuable if we can learn from each other. And we're not aware of any other potential, any other existing sort of forum right now where intentionally we're bringing people together on a some semi-regular basis to have these kind of conversations between and amongst the different domains. And I might point out that the first couple of, well, the last couple of conversations we've had online have been very much focused on that intersection between human services and health. And in particular, the data exchange standards, the NEEM standard and then the, the, the FIRE standard and HL7, uh, and where those two worlds uh, intersect or align, uh, in fact, being very different from one another's and having very different purposes. But it, it's, it provided very um, engaging and, and uh, uh, um, interesting conversation as these worlds began to come together. And we think that there are many other topics of this nature, whether or not it's identity management, resolution, security, um, you know, case management, the way we transfer information, the way we share it, confidentiality, privacy, a lot of those kinds of ideas uh, and, 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 and challenges that we face are being addressed in each of these domains. The question that we have is, can we line them up and can we begin to look for parallels or can we at least identify what are the driving factors in each of them and so that we can, we can consciously go into that and see if we can address those issues. We'll come back to that in just a, a little bit as we go through some of the, uh, the other slides. But in many ways, that's um, a lot of the foundational concept behind, uh, um, behind the NIC. So in, in addition to that, our, our goal and our, our premise is to um, work with people in different areas to focus on convening and activating stakeholders, uh, publishing scans and research, and facilitating conversations uh, both locally, regionally, and nationally uh, through webinars, training, and these kinds of things. Um, and then we hold reg regular uh, annual and regional uh, symposia um, and participate in others, like as I mentioned before, both the MESC conference and the SHE conference, um, so as to try to facilitate these conversations. Obviously, there's a lot more uh, that you can see online. The, the uh, NIC has grown significantly since we launched it. Um, there's over 750 members now. There's eight groups. Several of them are more active than others. This is a particularly active one. A lot of resources that people have committed and contributed to it. And interestingly enough, we have a two, two other important points. One is that um, our, the Let's Get Technical group has, has, has uh, really uh, grown to over 170 people have actually signed up, said they're interested in it. So there's an audience and a growing audience for this kind of conversation. And overall, there's been over 6,000 visitors to the site and a, a large consumption of pages. So there's been over 60,000 pages uh, page views. So we know that there's content that people are interested in. <clears throat> we know that there's engagement. People are coming to the, to the site, looking at multiple pages, spending some good amount of time on it, activating people and start to be also uh, interested in engaging and posting is our next uh, next uh, frontier, so to speak, as we can do that. And so that's a little bit of the background. Obviously, you can go to the site. There's plenty of material up there, both on the hub itself and on also on the National Interoperability Collaborative. 
Uh, last thing I'll mention is, you know, coming out of last week's call, one of the things that we um, discussed was trying to um, articulate the purpose of the group. Um, there was some different feedback around, so what is our goal? Where are we headed? What do we know? How do we know if we're making progress? So we posted on the NIC uh, site and within the Let's Get Technical site itself a one-page, um, we're calling sort of a manifesto, so to speak, which begins to outline what it is that we're trying to say. So, um, so that you yourself or your colleagues or people you work with or work for, um, you have something to point out and to say, you know, why are you spending time uh, during your day on this and what the importance of it is. We're hoping that that is, um, you know, sort of a, a work in progress. Um, so just this morning I posted a, a conversation with a link to it, and um, that would be a, another great place to have people either ask questions, make comments, um, uh, make recommendations about what, what works for them, what doesn't work, how it could be expanded. Um, so if you haven't yet had a chance, please go ahead and take a look at that and tell us what you think. You know, we're trying to get it down on paper, uh, especially given the, uh, what apparently, you know, it appears to be a lot of interest from at least the membership perspective and the engagement in these conversations. So we want to make this uh, not only our document, we want to make people who come onto the site and are dedicating time to it um, reflective of what you're thinking, what you want, and what you're thinking about. So take a couple minutes and uh, add your comments or thoughts. Even if it's you know, spot on and it sort of checks all your boxes, that's great to say as well. And if there's stuff missing or different than what you thought, please, uh, please share that with us. Let me pause for a second. Uh, before we move to sort of the next section here, and just ask for people, folks if you have any comments, you know, questions, responses so far, uh, thoughts that you might have before we move into the next section. And if you want to talk, just take yourself off a of mute. Don't forget there's prizes for more interaction and more involvement. <laughs> David, this is Pradeep. Uh, thank you yeah. for the overview. Uh, coming to the identity matching, uh, so will we have more discussions regarding the different methodologies involved within the matching, which is deterministic, probabilistic, rules-based, uh, differential matching, and all those as well, uh, separated by topics? Yeah, what I would say is one of the things that we definitely want to do is address very different specific topics associated with this kind of framework that Dave will talk about. And identity matching is one of those things. We did actually get into a bit of that uh, in one of the earlier conversations. Um, but I think that undoubtedly is a really critically important point um, uh, that, um, uh, that I, know we want, I know there's a lot of interest and energy around um, and so one of the things that might be interesting is to actually set up sort of a schedule saying, you know, if we're going to hold calls every week or every other week or whatever the right frequency is still, um, put some of those topics on there. Um, there's a lot of different things we can talk about, including that being one of them, uh, as well as kind of what the driving uh, strategies and policies are of the, different, uh, of the different domains. So I think that's a really important topic. And I know that there was a lot of energy around that conversation, which we can point out as well and point you to as well. So again, that would be a great suggestion. I think we'll take that down as um, you know, a very specific thing that we want to we want to address. And we'll ask people to prepare for some comments. I mean, we, we can go out to the network and folks we know can bring uh, you know, some presentation to it and then open it up for conversation about what works in the different domains. So we get educated also about what might if there's similarities across domains or if there's different unique different aspects that need to be addressed in each of the different in the specific domains based on the different privacy and, and regulatory environment that we're operating in thank you david and uh, another yep. follow-up is yep. uh, another topic within the domain is a potential topic might be the evaluation metrics how do we evaluate these different identity matching algorithms i mean what exactly is it I mean, um, how does it change depending on the domain or the application? So that may be another interesting mm -hmm. one. So, yeah. Yes, it sounds like you have some thoughts and some experience with that. So um, we may uh, we may call on you to uh, to sort of share some of your thinking around that as well. Absolutely happy to. Thank you so much. Great. Any other comments, questions, requests, thoughts? Okay. Uh, Dave, 
Um, let me turn it over to you for a bit, talk a little bit about the um, uh, let's get technical discussions to date and kind of launch into our major conversation here. That sounds great. Thanks, Daniel. Um, <clears throat> so uh, in terms of background, I just wanted to uh, mention a couple of things about myself as we move forward. I've been involved in the Medicaid space uh, for uh, many years at this point and am working with a group there called the MITE Attack. And the MITE Attack really focuses on the technical aspect of Medicaid, modularity, information exchange, and so forth. And uh, both last week and this week, I noticed uh, a couple of people who have had involvement in the TAC, uh, Tom Silvius from GDIT and Elizabeth Reed from GDIT were two that were on last week. And I'm happy to see John Oden uh, participating this week on the Let's Get Technical group. So, um, and very much uh, appreciate Tim Fletcher uh, getting involved. So what we're seeing is some cross-pollination between the groups, which I think is great because we're looking at attacking many of the same issues. Uh, healthcare has got a lot of momentum right now. There's some rules that are coming out of CMS and ONC uh, for later this year. And I see a great deal of traction coming out of that space. So I think we have an opportunity here to leverage those activities because many of those activities are the same things that we're going to have to tackle in the Let's Get Technical group. So uh, I really like to see that uh, exchange of information. I know I've uh, co-presented with Daniel uh, a number of times and been to the symposiums for Stewards of Change. So I think there is an awful lot of cross-pollination. And uh, this year at the MES conference, uh, Daniel and I are going to have the opportunity to speak at an educational uh, system, which Tim, some of your people are going to be involved with as well. And we're going to be talking about how we go forward and leverage the activities of the different groups to achieve a common end. So uh, with that being said, and I'd really like to encourage people to become interactive in this part of the conversation. Um, issues that we have discussed uh, to date, I think we have some decisions about where we take those topics going forward. What is a success as we start to move forward? Is a success our ability to discuss it is a success, our ability to document it with possibly some white papers and so forth, or does it become more involved where we actually start to implement proof of concepts where people can learn from it, people can exchange ideas and so forth. So we're open to all ideas there of how we take the efforts that we're putting in in terms of discussion and move that forward into real value for uh, the communities as we move forward. So that being said, I'm glad Pradeep is on the call here and engaged. One of the things that we did talk about in the past was identity matching. Dan Chavez uh, took us down that path initially. Uh, so we've got some real expertise. Sounds like we've got expertise from Pradeep as well. And what we decided to do is uh, the identity matching piece of this is a little different than many of the other topics that we're going to be discussing. Uh, many of the other topics are going to be based on standards that exist out there. And certainly our role would not be to define new standards, but rather to adopt 
the standards that we are we think are the most meaningful going forward what we found with identity matching is that it is a bit unique there aren't to the best of my knowledge and Pradeep you're certainly more of an expert on this topic than I am but um, there are approaches there are solutions but I'm not aware of any quote standards uh, surrounding them there may be standards within the solution so what we decided to do is uh, have a separate work group that's going to be starting to talk about identity matching. I know that there were some comments uh, in some of the responses to TEFCA, which is a trusted exchange framework that uh, ONC is uh, working on. But the question is, is there an ability to arrive at common approaches for identity matching. Like I said, uh, Dan Chavez can certainly tell us what can be accomplished with that. It's a big problem that is there for both healthcare and the human services sector. So our uh, initial approach was let's take and define that as a separate work group. Uh, I'd love to have you participate on it, uh, Pradeep. Let me ask you a quick question, Pradeep. Uh, do you believe that there are standards around identity proofing at this point, or do you believe that they're mostly solutions that are integrated into uh, other systems? Thank you very much uh, for the comments. And I think it's mostly about identity management solutions that are integrated. So that, that is my take on it. Okay, well this, this question then is just kind of fuel for thought as we move forward. Um, is there, and Dan, I hope you have some perspectives on this as well. Is there the opportunity to look at a common API for identity matching so we could have that commonality without trying to standardize that whole uh, identity matching, identity resolution. Is there the potential to put a front end piece on their APIs that could be in common and then the magic occurs in the solution behind that. So either Dan or Pradeep or anybody else that wants to comment on that. This is the no, I'm, before Dan answers that, I'm, 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 I'm concerned that we have some terminology issues. So I've, I've heard you use three terms and it sounds like you've used them virtually interchangeably. Identity matching, patient uh -huh. matching, identity management. So these are very separate things in my opinion. Usually when we talk about identity matching or proofing, we're talking about um, identifying a, a user of a system. It could be a clinician, it, it, it could be a patient, it, it, it could be a stranger, whatever, but it's, it's it's, it, it's making, it's, it's verifying that you are who you say you are. Patient matching is very different. That is making sure that we relate the, the data about a patient, typically from disparate systems, together accurately. So I guess I'm asking you, which are we talking about? Because I find the language to be very confusing to me. Okay. We're talking about patient this is matching. Right. We're talking about identity matching. We're talking, I'd also, throw, I'd also throw in the suggestion that patient matching is similar to the problem in social services of client matching. Okay. Right. So, uh, uh, right. I, I, I come from a healthcare world, so I, I, I express that in healthcare terms. It's the exact same, same problem, which is different than identity proofing, proving that someone trying to access a system is who they say they are and who you think they are. Right. So which are we talking about? 
Uh, at, th at this point, we're talking about uh, patient matching. Is uh, Dave Walsh the same guy as David P. Walsh? Um, okay. Then I would suggest that we use that term, patient or client matching. Uh, okay. That's okay. Okay, that, that's perfect. One of the uh, reasons for the confusion there is I think we were trying to avoid patient matching because there uh, could be an understanding there that we're talking about health care uh, exclusively. Yeah, I, 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 I have no problem with the term client matching as being more general. I, 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 I don't see that as a human services term exclusively. So. Gotcha. I'll, I'll, gotcha. Also point out, uh, I'll also point out that in the last two meetings, we've also had uh, uh, a member of our group here um, strongly recommend um, the uh, identity management and um, and identity proofing uh, as something that needs to be done in addition because uh, you know once you've solved the patient matching problem you still need to make sure that the person who's trying to get at the patient records um, and the role that they're playing right now is properly authenticated and properly authorized to get at those. right but but the, but the difference is for identity proofing there are standards and right. there is best practice, much different, particularly coming out of NIST. So, so there are some very specific um, um, uh, accepted principles around identity proofing. It doesn't make it easy necessarily, but, but, but there are very established standards around that. Yeah, yeah the identification <laughs> problem is largely solved, but not the patient matching. And this Correct. is ready. Yeah. And well, this, yeah, and this, yeah, this is Helen Hill. Um, I wanted to um, uh, actually support NOAM, uh, but also to say that groups like the Cantera Initiative have done a really good job with identity assurance matching. But when you try to apply that to a large client or patient population, um, it becomes A, very expensive, B, very difficult, and uh, it's really totally separate from the uh, from the identity, uh, pro the uh, matching process that we're talking about. Right. So, so you really uh, have to be careful about how you, how you look at it. Sure. Yeah. So the way we've got, or that I understand it at least, is the uh, identity matching, which we just described as client matching. And then on the slide, we talk about two different topics. One is the authentication. Is this really, d this guy who's trying to log on to our system says he's Dave Walsh, is he really and how can we prove it sort of a thing. And then authorization which would be how do we determine what this individual is allowed to do within the system. So we've identified him with the authentication and then we have uh, authorized that individual to do specific things. So does anybody have issues and we'll change that in the future to client matching instead of identity matching uh, to make sure that we're separating them clearly. Does anybody disagree with those three basic uh, topics, if you will? Client matching, authentication, is this really Dave Walsh who's trying to log in? How can we prove it is? And then what is he allowed to do once he logs in? I think those are three great topic areas, and uh, at some point, I'm I'm happy to share what we do if that's ever relevant. That's great. I agree, and uh, as a part of this uh, patient matching, um, we are using here a term called instead of identity matching, we're calling it as identity management because it is a process uh, which which takes into account many many different processes which is like record matching record linkage and reconciliation we are combining that entire umbrella as identity management that's the definition that we came up with as a part of my fellowship efforts and happy to happy to get into it in the, in the, in the future thank you 
Sounds good. Well, you will, we'll definitely reach out to you as we start to spin up that separate work group because it's a topic that is complicated, that's very dynamic at this point. Um, the question that I asked a moment ago, I'd love to hear anybody's perspective on it. Is there a way that uh, APIs, application programming interfaces, could be developed to interface with uh, those systems that perform the uh, client matching? Sure, they could be, but I don't believe such a generic API exists today. I'm, I'm not aware of, of, of any standard API for that. So the, the, the idea would be that the API would define a set of inputs the matching itself would, would function sort of as a black box, and then the API would define a, a set of outputs. So I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of, 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 of any standard articulation of that or, or one that's been implemented across products uh, to, 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 to create a more uniform uh, uh, interface. Yeah. Back in, uh, this is Brian, back in, uh, 2012 in New York State, we actually created a NEAM IEPD, a NEAM message for uh, exchanging um, identity matching information. Um, and it's not a standard per se, but it may be something that we can uh, start on. And it, it functioned as if it was an API. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, I would love it as we get started with that uh, breakout group to address client matching. Uh, I'd love to at least consider the possibility of an API that kind of standardizes how you talk to one of these systems, what it responds with and so forth. And maybe what we can do is do a little bit of research and find out if there are efforts to go do this, uh, to, to do something like inventing APIs to interface with it. And if there are, let's start to engage with them. If there is no effort to go do that, then at least we could consider starting to have the conversations that could eventually uh, arrive at some kind of an API to do it. But to move on. Um, hey, Dave. Yes, sir. Uh, our common key service uh, is API based. It's not necessarily standard, but it's not a secret. So I'm happy to, you know, let people look at that. Um, We've had to blend multiple standards for the mm -hmm. responses. So, like, we, we have an API call, but it might translate into a, a classic HL7 version 2 record update, uh -huh. you know, so that so that you can pass it back to a system for the for the key exchange. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to sit with folks or have people go through the specs. And if there's a standards way to do that, you know, march toward it. The, the other thing to look at would would would, would be the IHE pick stuff. Does that 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 may rise to the level of a standard? I wouldn't say it's necessarily widely deployed. It's been a little while since I looked at it, but the IHE has has got some 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 profiles around this. Yeah, the cross yeah. the cross community version of picks would 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 yeah. do some pieces of it, but not for yeah. in our case it's the actual assignment of the, you know, identifiers versus just the, are these two people the same? So who was that that's, who is that that's talking right now? Tim. Oh, that was Tim. Hey, Tim. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this is Helen. I just wanted to remind folks that in healthcare, we, we still don't have standards for, identifying the components of matching identity for, uh, the, for instance, patient name. We don't have uni uh, universal standards. So that's something that needs really to be worked on. And in the absence of that, you have all kinds of algorithms that need to be applied to make sure you've got the right match. 
Super. So, uh, Daniel, help me here a little bit. Uh, yeah. I'd love to start collecting some of the names of people who would like to participate in that group. Is the um, Do you believe that the Let's Get Technical uh, group is the right way to start collecting those names who, of people that want to get engaged? Yeah, I think so. I think that would be, you know, I think that would be the, the, the point of it is to identify a few people who want to sort of uh, define that. I, I think that's a great little product, actually, is just even defining terms, as Noam had pointed out. Are we talking about the same thing? Because I'm sure when we start to talk with folks from education or talk with folks from public safety or elsewhere, they're going to have a different, they're going to, you know, they're going to have a different uh, different set of uh, of um, of things, um, so um, you know I, uh, that they're talking about, but uh, aligning that. So I, I would I would assume at this point, you know, from what I'm hearing is, you know, Noam uh, said he's in, in interested in it. Uh, Pradeep sounds like he's interested in it. Uh, Tim might be, and also maybe we, uh, Dan would be willing as well, given the work they're doing in San Diego. Uh, you know, I think what we can try to do. Um, we don't have to solve that right now, but because uh, we want to get right. to. Um, but I think it's a great example of a pro, you know, of a of something that very quickly, uh, you know, we can post on the site, and that becomes a kind of a, a standard way of. Okay, so this group of a multidisciplinary group of people come together and say, okay, let's let's just tackle at least the definitional pieces of this. What are are there any standards? No, that we're not aware of, or are they moving in that direction? It's almost like a. It's almost like a, a template for how we address some of these particular pieces, some of which may fit nicely or not. Um, and again, it might be a good subgroup. We'll have to figure out exactly how that fits onto the hub. Uh, right now, it can be through a conversation, but we may be able to set up sort of uh, sort of projects. Um, yes. And then we can talk about that technically on the hub itself. There's a section to be able to do projects, which can be very specific to this. Um, right now, it's pretty basic functionality but we can customize that. Our, this is sitting on a Ning platform, and they've been very um, very receptive and responsive to customizing things as we need them. So we're right now putting together uh, the ability to put together a specific repository of information and knowledge, for example. So um, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, we'll capture this in the notes, and I'm sure that we'll um, uh, be able to sort of add to it. It'll be a nice example of whatever the resources are that we can bring together. Um, uh, and, so, yeah. Dave and uh, Daniel, this is Tim again. I, yeah. I, I would, whether it's this or something else, this is nice and concrete, yeah. both both of the, them are, but it, it would be very good if we could, within this group, articulate, even if it's a weak methodology, a repeatable approach where mm -hmm. we define the um, use case or a, mm -hmm. you know an example of the user story and then we can walk across some of the different domains that are involved. Great. And so mm -hmm. we, we, we could kind of begin to frame up the, I'll call it the business side or the need, right, in the same time we're sort of framing up the, the technical conversation underneath. Yeah. So that the conversations that happen here and the let's get technical component can actually be translated when we take it someplace else mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. we, we, we could show a, a constituent, say, in a state or jurisdiction, and now we, we can kind of show, well, this is when they're in child welfare, this is when they're in the justice system, this is when we're in health care, this is when they're under some social assistance program. We we can kind of walk that story. But and this is when they're in the health care system, by the way. Right. Yeah. So we've got we've to figure out how do we bridge all of these different domains yep. and and that's and, and so we can kind of tell the story to ourselves in a consistent way right around a, an right. actor and I, I think i think teeing a few of those up and then making sure we've we've shown all the different potential silo areas uh, and then doing a crosswalk okay, here's how we do it in this mm -hmm. domain and here's how we do it in healthcare, or here's how we have to do it whatever that wherever we're at on that journey that I think looking at that crosswalk, we can kind of step back and say, okay, these guys over here, I think they figured this out, or wow, this is a mess across the board, or 
you know, there's a piece here and a piece there. And I think if we stitch them together, we, we could have a whole solution. This is Adam. I just want to make a couple of very quick points. <clears throat> Excuse me. One is that, uh, Tim, I think that, you know, you, you're illustrating um, the value of sort of look having a six domain or, you know, multi-domain advantage on all of this as we think about what we're doing. Um, and the second is um, I think this conversation is is providing some real insights into and this will be a conversation for another day, but into what constitutes success for this group. Because I already see two or three, <clears throat> excuse me again, two or three ways to define success as we proceed just on this one topic, you know, from, um, from devising the solution to having a really engaging conversation among a bunch of, you know, pretty high level experts um, to the possibility that we, we are going to be doing something that we can contribute um, in other ways to, to whether it's ONC working on TEFCA or somebody working on something else, but that we can make a genuine contribution here. So I think there are several measures of success just in this one conversation that at some point we should delineate uh, how we want to look at this. I agree. And one of, one of the things you may want to consider, Tim, is uh, I know Matt is going to be at the same presentation as Daniel and I at the MES conference. Um, and I know how much time Matt has on his hands. So um, it, it may be that he wants to just say a couple of words about what you guys are doing there, because it seems like something that could really benefit from the cross domain, certainly healthcare and human services. So give that a little thought, whether he wants to mention that in, in that presentation. Yeah, no, in no. MES. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to, but it, one of the, the things that Matt does is he runs interoperability land. Interoperability land is a great thing, but there's no way the interoperability Institute or my hen or any other group is going to come up with all these stories and we're right. looking for folks to build those out so that people can then upload yeah. those into the environment to sort of figure out how things work but yeah yeah that that the, telling those stories has been our key to success in michigan and so if if we can get people to show the different versions of their perspective um, it will be insanely helpful to translate into technology that might cross domains. So, but to me, whatever we use, we just have to have a repeatable approach that we do for kind of our, our NIC methodology each time somebody brings an awesome problem to us. Gotcha, gotcha. I think that's part of the uh, pioneering work um, that this, you know, this initial project will, um, will, will entail, which is exciting because if we can set kind of that expectation for how it can best be used and Tim I know you've been and other many others on this call have been you know sort of toiling away in their domains and cross domains so I think I think this will be exciting and interesting and really valuable to define it in the ways that are are in fact usable from a business case and from a applicability and teaching and learning so that um, as we move forward you know we'll have that to either replicate or, or adapt that kind of templated approach I love the idea of having the use cases and actually the business cases and show people how it goes translates from different uh, segments and different domains uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that as we move to the next couple of slides um, but this is a terrific start and if you if you haven't yet you know wanted to participate or identify I put up on the chat some of the names of people I've heard, if you want to join it, um, as I said, we'll set up, I think we can do is set up at least an initial either um, conversation or we'll, we'll set up a project that will, uh, that will identify folks and then we'll figure out the governance around that, how that will, how that will happen next. Back to you, Dave. Super. Super. So um, the other two points on that first major bullet, uh, authentication and authorization, I think are much more well-defined. Uh, they're not uh, cookie cutter. There's different approaches, certainly in the healthcare space. Uh, fire seems to be the dominant player at this point, and there is a uh, companion technology, I'll call it, that is something called Smart on Fire, 
and that is what is used for authentication and authorization. Uh, there's some technologies under that, like OAuth2, which is one of the um, dominant technologies used on the web for uh, authentication. Uh, so it's more well-defined, and I think that we can address it within the scope of our other initiatives, whereas client matching is some is 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 a world in its own i know that as i was looking at a little bit i noticed uh pew had uh commented made a couple of comments to the onc um uh proposals out there that possibly something like apis into the tefka world could be used as uh, a common approach uh, I don't myself believe that there is any one magic solution today for the client matching. I think it'll be dynamic with a lot of uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, other initiatives that bake into it because it'll never be a black and white. It'll be, I think, more probabilistic in terms of this is we're pretty sure that this is really dave walsh who's trying to do this or those two records match each other so uh therefore the logic of having a separate work group whereas authentication and authorization can probably be handled in the scope of other activities that we decide to take on so if we move down to um transport uh, yes i'm sorry can I just just make a comment about something that that you said? It it it's a no. I'm you know we've 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 talked on and off in this group about about fire. Uh -huh. um, while fire is clearly a key e emerging technology, we yes. need to be careful about calling it the dominant anything. I mean, if you look at what is installed and in production, uh, certainly in, in 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 healthcare, it certainly isn't fire. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so yes, we, we need to keep our eye on the ball, but we also need to be clear that we understand sort of where we are today and just how hard it is to move an installed base as broad and deep as, as what we have in, in healthcare to fire or, 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 or anything else. I agree. I absolutely agree. And, uh, Tim, I, you know, if you would like to make some comments here, uh, I guess the point that I was, that, that I believe at this point is you're absolutely right. Uh, fire is not currently the dominant technology, but it is getting an awful lot of oxygen and uh, with CMS and their proposed rules and so forth, I think it will be the one that is getting the most investment and effort moving forward. But absolutely agree with you, Noam, that uh, it is not the dominant technology out there today. Tim, did you want to comment at all on that? Or Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think it's, it's coming. It's coming quickly. Um, but I think RESTful APIs are a dominant technology. Um, they are. In a lot of places. And so I think... You know, I, I think there's a convergence happening, and I, I think we, you know, I, I think if we're gonna, um, I can't forget who remember who said it, but if we're gonna skate to where the puck is going. Mm -hmm. By the time we get all our forces and things mobilized, I think we need to be sensitive to the installed base because without yes. that, we're not going to go anywhere. But I, yes. I also think we need to move to where the momentum is and is going. And so if we're intelligent about it and not fire crazy, um, then I, I think we, we, we can sort of migrate to where resources are likely to show up and exactly. energy is likely to, to converge. But right. and, yeah, and one of the, I think we have to acknowledge that, that the installed base of fire has a long way to go to hit critical mass. Right. And, and one of the, the, the bridging strategies that many of us are using are, are moving to RESTful APIs with some of our existing technologies and, 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 and record formats, right? So, 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 so fire typically uses rest, 
but anything can use rest. <laughs> right, exactly. So that's, that's a great segue, Noam, to the next set of uh, conversations, and that is when we transport this data from uh, one domain to the other domain, what are the potential candidates for being able to do that? And right now, uh, HTTPS seems to be the emerging dominant approach to doing that. Uh, that could be in RESTful APIs, it could be FIRE and so forth. So I'm not aware when you look at all the complexities of getting messages from point A to point B in a secure manner, that there are a lot of um, uh, competitors, if you will, to HTTPS. Uh, if, uh, the one thing that I wanted to at least mention is uh, some technology that uh, provides that information via streams. And I use Kafka as an example. Kafka is an open source project out of uh, the Apache Foundation and is used by some major players to be able to distribute data. Uh, uh, people like LinkedIn and so forth use it a great deal. It's, uh, but it, it's a different model. So whereas uh, a RESTful interface tends to be more request response. So Noam asked this question about this individual and got data back um, on that individual. Technologies, streaming technologies like a Kafka is um, more about streaming. So take an example, it might not be a good one, but if somebody is released from prison, there may be people who want to be made aware of this individual being released. So the ability to um, subscribe to events whenever they occur is another pattern that may make sense for us to investigate moving forward. I don't know, Tim, have you all looked at anything like streaming or are you more focused on request response? And Tim may be on mute. I'm, you may I'm, you I'm, may I'm, phrase it more I'm, not as streaming as much as um, as publish and subscribe. Okay. Yeah. Hi. As hi as Tim. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I think publish and subscribe. I mean, we 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 think there's a missing link in a lot of these conversations that which in Michigan we call the active care relationship service, which is our poor man's version of a blockchain or digital ledger mm -hmm. at least, where mm -hmm. everybody declares who's connected to whom. And, you know, people chase provider directory, they chase patient matching. We think that the most important base construct is anyone who's touching a person um, you know, uh, figuratively, you know, has a relationship with a person should be declaring to a service that, that they have that, which fits very much a publish and subscribe model, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. keeping, here's all the people, let's just say in a state or jurisdiction, and here's all the relationships that they're connected to, whatever the program is, you know, if they're in SNAP, if they're going to a food bank, if they've got a, a primary care physician, if they were just in the ED, if they're in the PDMP, you know, tracking those, those relationships or linkages, we think is a baseline function, but it's not, it's not really a thing in the outside world beyond our universe. And um, once you have that, publish and scribe, publish and subscribe don't make any difference. It's whatever is easiest for folks. Um, because it, if, if you know all the places a person has a relationship, 
you can follow that map back to query or you can basically use that same infrastructure to push data to all the folks who are connected to that. And so uh, it's a little bit of a, of a different thing from our, our vantage point, but we think it scales across all the domains. Gotcha. So let me, this let me, John, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I've never heard of Kafka. I've never heard the, 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 of the, the, the stream technology. Certainly in public health, almost all the data that's moved is, is essentially an, an unsolicited push of, 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 of data for public health reporting. There is some query response, but, but that's certainly not the majority by volume. And that's typically done via uh, web, web services, probably a little more than, than um, then rest, 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 restful services only because a, a lot of this stuff's old, older. There is also the whole um, direct um, movement within within healthcare, which is essentially a secure email um, technology. And if you talk to the folks in on the direct project and and direct trust, um, they they believe that. Uh, um, that 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 they have the the hammer and every problem is a nail. So 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 they 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 believe that that's the way to to sort of move 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 data around, especially uh, an unsolicited data that you're uh, that you want to push from from one location to another. Uh, there are also some some older uh, transport technologies. Uh, in, in, in use in, in public health, but they're, they're largely declining everything from SFTTP to something called FinMS. Um, but they're, again, they're, there's a long legacy tale of, 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 uh, of these technologies being deployed, uh, but they're, they're, they're really not, not, uh, not, not being perpetuated actively. Gotcha. So let, let me move on to the, the next uh, set of bullets here, which I think is really relevant and would, exp whoop, I'm sorry, Daniel, I was uh, looking at the final set there, fire or mean for a data model. And one of the things we've had a number of discussions over the last couple of weeks of both the fire data model, which is fundamentally coming from HL7, and NEEM, which I think is more uh, involved in the human services space and so forth. And some of the things that we have discussed is the possibility, and, and I personally believe, I'm certainly happy to hear other people's perspective on it, but I think both data model standards will be things that we need to understand and meet, need to be able to transport messages based on those data models going forward. So some of the things that we have uh, discussed is the possibility of using fire transports to be able to move that message from point A to point B, even though the data content is a neem message that we're moving from point A to point B. So that's something that I think uh, we should discuss in more detail as we move forward. Um, because th to the best of my knowledge, there is not a standard way to transport a neem message at this point. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll open it up for any comments on that. Well, I mean, my my own perspective is is that I'm I'm puzzled by the phrase fire transport. Fire has 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 in 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 some people's thoughts and in, including mine, you know, it's just sort of um, look when 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 fire started, the goal was sim simplicity, mm -hmm. and and one of the things that it did is in, is actually violate a rule that 
that that a number of, of initiatives held by by sort of mixing transport and format, right? I mean, mm -hmm. there's no such thing as fire transport. Fire uses rest, so it's it's, so it's, it's not fire's transport. It's, it's it's that fire is using some someone else's transport, and there's. You know, in, 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 in the old days at H HL7, you never mixed the record format with the transport, right? Because why should you be bound to use any particular transport? So, so FIRE decided that, it, at least in its, in its early days, it was going to make things simple by defining a basic record format in its, in, 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 in its resources, a, a set of activities, and and by using rest 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 restful uh, transport to make it easier for her people, so they didn't have to struggle with the transport decision. Mm -hmm. In hindsight, I'm not actually sure that it that it was such such a good thing. But I, I I would never say fire transport. What you're really saying is, we might might we suggest using restful transport, which fire happens to promote for need. Perhaps I'm splitting hairs, but I, I, I think it's an important uh, uh, nuance. Yeah. So I, if, I, if I think rest is much more neutral when we're trying to consider crossing domains. And I think I, I would certainly personally be very comfortable of us talking about, you know, restful APIs and then using fire as a concrete example. Fair enough. I agree. I, totally I agree, agree. This as well, is Marshall. Right. I, I just, I wanted to make a quick comment about um, the when you stream or not to stream. So this is where I think it's very important we recognize that the provenance of understanding the context of where the data came and from what context, the network and the device, all of those components, that is critical because you cannot stream substance use or mental health records because each time you have to have verified consent. So it's helpful if we just keep putting in our mind, it's the rules around the data as it comes, and then being able to articulate the small data sets rather than thinking we have to open and copy folders of information from people. And then we don't get hung up on, it has to be an information sharing or a data sharing. It is possible to do small components that still make it much easier to get the right information to the right people. And then when possible, when the rules have been documented and we do have a path, meaning we understand the rules all the way around of may I, and if, if I don't know certain things and it will always be no, then we, I think we move much faster forward than if we try to go with the format and not recognizing what usually ends up causing a roadblock with data is because we don't know something about the context or the network or the device or the behaviors around that, that event. Super. I, I, yes, I see it, Marceline. This is Larry. I want to take that, that comment in, a, in another direction, right? Because it seems to me that all of this hinges on proper authorization and authentication. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about dealing with organizations that are in completely different domains, identifying who is the keeper of the keys, who says this person is authorized and who authenticates people, it seems to me that could become challenging. What is this group working on to support the authentication authorization piece? That's a really good question. <laughs> um, you know, my thought process, because of my background, was to lean more towards what is healthcare doing, and are there products coming out of healthcare that we, or approaches coming out of healthcare, that we can use in the human services space as well. I, I don't know what is ultimately going to come out of Tefka. I would imagine that it's going to touch on some of those issues. Um, Tim or Brian, got any thoughts? I, I have, this is Marsh Lagan. I know you didn't call me yeah. out, but I do know what's going on with the healthcare because with TEFCA, ENAC, Weedy, Safe Biopharma, they came together and created what they consider as a pathway between covered and non-covered entities and what would that look like for QHIN. 
and authorization and what are the shared responsibilities or opportunities between organizations that come together to make some of these agreements. That is part of what they're working on with the, they call it the TNAP, Trusted Network Accreditation Program. Now in the education space, it's very fragmented. So if you're, if you're wanting to connect with schools as a way to verify a parent or child relationship and consent or age or the need, it gets more fragmented, but there are only a handful of integrators in the school system. So there's, I don't know, four major ones. So it is possible to be able to create some expectations, but I would say healthcare is further along than something like education. But I will, this is Tim Pletcher, and I will, I will say that we, um, we struggle with who is the actual custodian of a, of a child. You know, there, there's a lot of complicated family relationships. And I would say the schools are further along in understanding who's on first. And can, can both the mother and the, and the father you know, see certain kinds of information. Yes. And so yes. in our they are, environment. They're further along in, <laughs> in knowing, but the digitizing in, in, it. That's the, yeah, yes, yeah. Ex exactly. And so we, we've found that there's a real potential synergy that we kind of defer to their expertise, but then kind of under the hood, we're, we're digitizing what they've told us because, you know, we, we don't know if the immunization record can be shared with both mom and dad you know, and in what context. And so that's, that's been a really good partnership. And I think illustrates a, a great example of healthcare, maybe having some technology ready to go, but having no clue uh, <laughs> how to handle the sort of, um, you know, authorization for access. Well, I wouldn't say no clue. I mean, folks, folks who deal with pediatric health are certainly <laughs> sensitive the issues about adoption, about about custody, about all all of this, and and, and, and I and I'm sure all every, every immunization registry's got that perfectly figured out. But um, <laughs> oh, I wouldn't go that far either. It, 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 it's a it's a complicated space, and and all I'm saying is that um, you know there's some real synergy by who's got feet on the ground of dealing with it every day, versus folks who are trying to just do a a data sharing activity that, that happens with, you know, less frequency than the child being dropped off or picked off every day. That is the opportunity. And that's the opportunity, I think, in San Diego, where the Department of Education has already agreed to participate in some way to be able to provide what is allowed to better shore up the identity. And uh, determining custodial relationships is almost impossible in the U.S. Unless you're divorced and have proof of it, it's really hard to prove it. So by far, schools are the best to get that information. Let so, me, um, Dave, were you going to say something else? Yeah, I was just going to make the final point there. And uh, one of the things that we're going to have to do, uh, discuss over time is whether it is a fire message or a name message, as we go to the different domains, we should discuss how the model definition progress or process works. How do we define a new message going forward? We'll pick on Neem uh, because uh, Brian is on the line, but it's something that we've got to figure out. What is the process that we come to a common understanding of what this message looks like? Um, that is one of the things that I think we we should take a look at. Daniel, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm. I want to do uh, just be uh, aware that uh, you know we've got uh, um, just a few minutes left in this uh, this uh, this time here. It's um, it's amazing uh, just the, uh, the the depth and the content of the conversation. Um, I was going to ask two things, just to just sort of pivot a little bit, and thanks, Dave, for mm -hmm. um, sort of covering these. I think we uh, identified some real opportunities to dive into some things. I was going to ask two questions. One is, um, you know, we we identified, uh, you know, at least one one working group on the identity um, matching here, um, and then I'm thinking, I'm wondering if there's um, if it's appropriate to be calling out again. It may be a little early. Uh, you know something on the transport piece and something on the data model piece that we've talked we've touched upon here. 
as a way to at least begin to articulate uh, or at least sort of cue these up as ways to articulate the, the similarities and differences, the challenges, the models, the standards for um, really important components of the interoperability um, sort of journey we're on here. I don't know if, I don't know if that rose to uh, the surface for folks. But it seemed to me as we were talking about um, you know transport and and um, and data models that, that there's some real specific work to be had, especially if we look at some specific use cases. This so, is Brian. Um, yeah. I I love the use cases that are that are that were articulated in the one pager. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and, and as you know from my presentations, the last two meetings, you know, there are plenty more to to select from as well if people aren't happy with those. But I would point out that the that what we have been talking today about today is the absolute foundation for any of those other use cases. Yeah. And in and I would suggest that while we might choose one of those use cases just to just to inform one or more of those use cases actually, just to inform our direction, uh, that at first we ought to be looking at well, how do we do identity proofing? Um, how do we do patient client matching? How do we exchange a request? Do you have any records for this particular patient? And am I allowed to um, actually even ask that question in my, in my current identity and authenticated identity in my current role? And having done that, we now have over perhaps a name to fire bridge, we have created the foundation for then being able to do any of the other um, mm -hmm. cross-domain mm -hmm. uh, use cases that we're talking about. So, so I, I hear you. I hear you suggesting that that we, um, while we've these other topics are obviously critically important, that we focus in on this first one, this first set of uh, of sort of of. Um, I'll call them use cases for identity managing often, you know, the, the things that we just, with the things you just mentioned. And let's get yeah. that, let's write that down. Let's look at it, see if it makes sense to folks who can pick it up and look at it, read it, understand it um, from wherever you come from. Let's try yep. to get this done in the next six months. And then we've got something concrete mm -hmm. to share with the world and that we can then build upon in the second half mm -hmm. of 2020. So one of the questions that I would have, Daniel, and uh, there's not enough time on this call to go through, mm -hmm. but um, is what is our product? What are we trying to do? Are we trying to have discussions where we all become a little bit more educated? Are we trying to write white papers on it? Are we trying to build a proof of concept where we get our hands dirty and say, hey, here is an API to go do this or that. Here's how we're addressing this. So one of the things that I would like to do in the not to so distant future is uh, define what our product is, for lack of a better term. Is well, well, Dave, that's a, that's a great point. I think we had a very ambitious agenda today. I just put up a, the other, the other uh, conversation that we were intending to have, which I think we can push forward to next week. I have sent out an invitation for the next, the rest of the Fridays in August, um, and I encourage us to sort of keep, if possible, to keep that sort of cadence because it seems like we're able to make progress and there's not too much uh, space between that. And what I would—that's exactly what we've been um, sort of thinking about behind the scenes here—is you know what is success? What you know, what the things you just said, Dave. Um, you know, is it you know, is it proof of concept? Is it education? There's a lot of different moving pieces here. What comes first? Um, you know, what's going to keep people's attention and interest and, and participation? Um, I think tangibility is really useful and being able to point to things. Uh, on the other hand, I think that you know, not everyone's going to be in every conversation, the expert on that. So, what I would suggest is, and just open it up for just a couple minutes here, is that. Um, and I don't know if it's possible, uh, given, given both a lot of people on these calls are going to be either at the Sheik of the MESC or the uh, Nashby meeting, which is also happening the same week in Chicago, uh, whether we'd be able to make progress. But maybe it would make sense to just to sketch out for the folks who uh, offered to participate at least just a, a, some bullet points about how we might approach uh, this first piece and spend the time next week sort of talking about that 
and then about sort of these next steps and what does success look like, you know, um, because I think there's a lot of education. I think on the social and human services side, people don't know how to, people don't know much about TEFCA. Uh, certainly on the education side, there's things happening that none of us outside of that world uh, would know much about what's driving longitudinal data sets and, and identity and, and uh, all those kinds of things. And that's true for every domain. So we kind of struggle with, do we do an educational sort of immersion on some of these major, uh, major things? Um, and or do we, you know, do we just sort of plow ahead on, on this sort of smaller, or not smaller, but a more focused discussion? Um, and that's what, that's what I'd, I'd like to have us sort of comment on. Maybe we start that next week with that kind of conversation. We can, and then try to sort of, um, sort of focus on what that, um, what that kind of use case template would be if folks are available. Um, we had uh, put together a couple of use cases and I think to Brian's point, I think they may be too narrowly focused. I think we should develop the use case, as Tim was suggesting, to illustrate um, the specific point that we want to make and whatever is the most prominent one um, to really look at this idea of, of you know, identity management uh, or, or, I'm sorry, client and or patient management. Um, so uh, does that seem reasonable to folks? Does anybody um, uh, violently disagree with that idea? And the idea would be to start with a conversation on sort of the next steps of this, the slide that's up here, kind of what we want to accomplish. We may not get it done. It may be an evolving conversation, but then sort of maybe move our half, the other half of the conversation to this larger conversation or this specific conversation around um, patient or client management. And at least develop the framework for how that might look uh, and dive into that a bit more and let people know specifically that's what we're going to be talking about. And that the folks who volunteered could maybe have that sort of conversation, uh, and we can be working on that as we uh, as we go forward. This is Brian. I, I agree with you that we need to uh, that. While I was saying earlier, we needed to dive down into the technical details of patient slash client uh, matching, and for that matter, um, identity proofing, authentication, authorization. That. Before we do that, or in parallel with doing that, we need to uh, work through one or more of the user stories. For instance, when we say uh, being able to exchange information between social services and the justice system, what does that mean? If we're talking about the justice system being able to exchange information with the healthcare system, as by the way, the majority of the of the 400 plus. Uh, uh, NEEM healthcare related elements that have been defined are defined by the Justice Department for doing just that. What right. do we mean when we're talking about that? So, Right. All right. Well, I know that uh, people have been incredibly generous with time. Um, I, I, we're going to propose that when we get on the call next week, we can uh, sort of revisit that. But I think if we dedicate a little bit of time to success factors, what we want to get out of it, and then sort of move to this other conversation that would be effective. Uh, we'll post this conversation as well. I think the chat notes go up there as well, so people can keep uh, keep it appraised of that. And then again, uh, that smaller group, if there's a way to um, begin to post some ideas on that project, um, on that project uh, app on the on the hub, that might be great. Um, that uh, unfortunately, that project is not um, group specific. So you'll see as you go on to it, uh, let me just show you, take one second here to do that. Um, um, do we not have that? Darn. Um, While you're playing that up, if we can yep. close out the authentication authorization piece, yep. it sounds like that that's not something that we're currently working on, and I think everybody recognizes that without that, we're not going to be able to share yep. data at all. Um, is that something that you want to add to the identity management group, or does that need to be its own separate entity? Good question. And I think we ought to be very careful with the phrase identity management um, and talk about patient client, patient slash client um, uh, matching. And separately from that is the uh, identity proofing, the authentication and perhaps authorization aspects of it. And we might end so up with two different to be a separate subgroups. Group? I, I have a question. Are the people <clears throat> who are expert in one also expert in the other? I'm not a technology guy. So 
it does it make it, the two subgroups do they have different people um, or are they the same people thinking about different aspects of one issue no they're di they're different issues but tend to have people who have expertise in both uh -huh. I agree I'm just thinking of people's bandwidth to you know how wide can people contribute their time um, so it may I, I'll just put it out that it it, it may be a, a matter of of doing one and then the next rather than trying to organize two separate ones. I don't know that. I'm just putting it out. I kind of agree with you, Adam. I, I think maybe if we have a group that is looking into um, client matching and uh, authentication authorization, uh, identity proofing, if you will, um, that then that group can decide amongst themselves, okay, who really is dedicated to this patient matching issue? Who's really dedicated to um, identity authentication? Are they, is there a significant overlap? If not, maybe they carve out two separate subgroups. But let's let them get started as a single group and then figure out how they proceed from there. Yeah, I agree with that. Think of it as the identity group and they do partially matching and partially authentication. Yeah. Yeah, and I think one of the things we need to do is determine what our success factor is, what our goal is, because if we take it to its logical conclusion and uh, build proof of concepts, it's going to be more demanding, whereas if we just write papers on it, and I don't mean that as anyhow uh, if what we do is write papers on it have discussions then one group could probably handle multiple things so it's something to factor in there and of course this all fits into how much of the work is being done as volunteers as we're currently doing so uh, and you know if we start writing code we probably need to get some funding to uh, support uh, the developers so Yep. Right. That's what we want to. I think if we can demonstrate that this group, this uh, this um, <laughs> group has come together and produced something, um, then I think that's a that's a good support for that. Um, let me just say here, as you go onto the hub, you'll see something called projects. You can add a project, and again, right now it's very it's very basic. There's a project name, and then there's basically a box and tags. We can add more to this. But this at least gets us started. So I'd like it if we could um, just add, you know, sort of a, a definition of what this first project would look like, and uh, and then start to have a little conversation. Hopefully, we could get that uh, rolling a little bit before next week. And uh, what we can do is we can call on the folks who have uh, volunteered all so far to at least write, a, you know, a couple paragraphs on what that might look like, um, and then we can go from there. And as I said, we can expand this. We can have different functionality. You can put links into it. We can use either Google Docs or other kinds of things or other functionality uh, that we'll find useful for it. We didn't want to over-engineer it to start with. That is, you so, want to start a project named Identity, and then we can weigh in and, um, and competitively edit <laughs> the description. <laughs> I just want to keep us from having five different identity projects created. What should we call, what should we call it? Identity? What's what you call this? Identity proofing and client slash patient management? Patient management? Matching. Patient matching. matching. Client slash patient matching. Client slash patient matching. Hi Well, I think we want to keep our how's that? Okay. Bingo. Perfect. I'm gonna leave this I'm gonna just leave this and feel free to um uh folks start the start the commentary. Um and then we'll we'll uh we'll solve this um uh, uh, or we'll fill this out as we go forward and see how we can do this and bring a little order to it. Uh, okay. I'll just say. Sure, you only want to give us three weeks to work on this. <laughs> For the first paragraph, we'll see what, what okay. we can do. We can always ex we can always extend that. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll upload a uh, somebody's got a good image for this one. We can we can look at that. Uh, create a little identity there. Okay, everybody, I don't want to take any more time. Uh, you've been incredibly generous. This has been fa great, fascinating, involved conversation. Um, have a great weekend, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next week.
Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.